Warriors of Asim, the monthly Final Fantasy XIV fan podcast. We are a group of Warriors of Light from Lamia World on Primal Data Center, here to shut the hour away. I'm Yosora Polianus, veteran black mage. With me I have our ever-fierce warrior, Kilira Tellian. Hello. And the high-soaring dragoon, Asario Limuli. Hello. We're recording a little late because of the live letter that was uh, two days ago. So that's going to be fun. We'll be talking about everything that went on in that live letter. Um, the 68th letter from the producer live. Before we get to that, uh, do any of you have, any, have anything from your weekly 514 playing, monthly I should say, that you want to share? Um. Well, I mean, I finally found a melee DPS job that I actually enjoy playing. First time in eight years. Reaper? I almost nine years. Yeah. Oh, Reaper. Reaper's great. I love. Yeah. Reaper. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I've played all the jobs to a greater or lesser extent. Yeah. For the course of the game being around, and I've had them all. Um, by the end of Stormblood, I had them all at cap, and I've kept them at cap since then. And. I could just never get into like the regular melee DPS. Like I remember, Monk was the second job I leveled, and I just I couldn't stand it. And um, tried Dragoon, Samurai's okay, but I really like Reaper. Reaper just flows really well, especially once you get all the skills together. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like I struggled with like all the melee DPS. Like Dragoon is okay, and Sam is okay, but Reaper like just clicked with me. Like. The moment I started it, and uh, I've I've almost capped it to ninety now, and it's really fun. Anything for you, Azaria? Uh, not too much. I have uh, not played as much as I would have liked the last couple of weeks due to computer issues and just other things going on. I did finally get a crafter to ninety entirely through custom deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> We're good um, for that. So, and I did. I also finished my one hundred deliveries for Imnago and Kurnai. Yeah, and I'm. Almost done with the uh, the roll quests. I still have um, I have uh, Reaper and Dancer at about eighty seven each, and um, I'm gonna I, I could do the, the melee one anytime, but I want to put the experience on the job I'm leveling. So yeah. when Reaper gets to eighty nine, I'll, I'll do all those. Yeah, but uh, so those are the only two, those are the only two I have left to do. Yeah, I actually I've finished. Just, um, yeah. I've actually finished finished Monago's custom deliveries as well. This uh, like I think it was like last week. Uh, still don't know why they don't let you like glamour her. I think that's strange. I think it's, yeah, it is I weird. She's a, I think the idea is if she's a soldier, she has to be in her, soldier, in her uniform for the resistance or something. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little odd. If you can dress up a princess in whatever you want, but yeah, <laughs> she but she already she already abandoned her her post. And that is true. And that that is true. Just, Already kind of doing her own thing, and we're but, gonna we can we'll talk more about custom deliveries later. We on. will, yeah, yes. But, yes. So yes. I've got all I've had all mine capped since right after Endwalker. I had to finish off um, what's his name, the Ishgard guy. Oh, name. um, yeah, um, yeah, I know what okay. you mean. Yeah, I, that was I just leveled my gatherers and crafters in eight in several expansions. Though I only just started doing custom deliveries really in uh, Endwalker, so. I only have leather worker at ninety. I need to go and work on the others. I've just been lazy to do them because it's yeah. So yeah. Um, the live letter, which started off with you know the, their sound test, ended up being like a big news report because <laughs> of uh, Yoshi P stating that there will not be any NFTs put into Final Fantasy fourteen. Yay! Yeah. That's like I the don't... best news of the yeah, entire I live letter. I don't think it's particularly surprising. Um, no. 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 I mean, I, I'm. I'd be interested in hearing his thoughts on like just the technology because I'm pretty certain he's got a pretty good handle on it. And but you can tell there was a lot of like, trying not to step on too many toes with that. So you couldn't throw the CEO under the bus. So like, but yeah. but but I, he still made it very clear that like he doesn't think the NFTs should be in games that like aren't designed around them. And yeah, that and that if they're defined around them, then we can just ignore them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I figured there was no way they were going to put NFTs in FF14 just because of the technology required for it. But um, I saw some other people who responded to it with, with his comment. Might want to talk later about it with a beat like, "Ah, oh, sad." But yeah, I'm curious what he thinks about it. I'm he always has interesting NFTs. things to say. 
yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of NFTs in general. I think there's argument made that any, it can be bad in general just because it legitimizes crypto in general. But if if anyone's going to talk about it in an even-handed way, and it might actually have some ideas for how to use it, I'm, I'm open to the idea that there might be something to do with it. I don't know what it would be, but there could be. And, and I think he, he's the kind of person who would be able to potentially explore that. Um, or at least come up with some ideas for it. I, I am curious if he gets that chance to talk what he has to say. I'm not eager to see NFTs yeah. in games, but I am of curious. Course, and the other things they were t- talking about was how much of a pain it is to, to deal with interviews from the Japanese press, so who knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, because that was that, the start of it. He talked about like being interviewed, about, interviewed on the Metaverse thing. All right, so do we need to go over the previous 10 years at all? I don't think so. <laughs> we kind of covered like our experience with the game in the last episode. And I'm sure so. if, if you want to hear about the history of Final Fantasy XIV, there's dozens of YouTube videos you can watch about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think they really had anything there that we wouldn't, that would, that there, there's much to talk about there. No, um, it's the next 10 years that's the interesting yes. part. Yes. Uh, trusts. Yeah. Trusts are coming. They're actually doing it. They're bringing trusts into the past expansions. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm sure they do it. I'm surprised. Or I was a little what surprised because they're planning to do all of it in this expansion, in this patch cycle. Yeah. I was expecting. Um, I'm not too surprised because once you do it, you really got to commit to it. Like they want it. They they do want to get it ready to go. Particularly if um, 7.0 is going to like at least like give a decent like not starting point, but at least a a nice refresh for yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just they want people to be work able work. to get through all the stuff and be ready for 7.0. I saw some people surprised that they're going from ARR forward and not working backwards from Stormblood, which I can kind of see. But, I mean, ARR is going to be the biggest investment for doing it to begin with, so they might as well get that done with. Exactly. Yeah, I could have seen it going either way, so in terms of the direction. I mean, yeah, my cause... question is, um, I wonder if they're ever going to expand it to the non-MSQ dungeons, um, or if they're just going to stick with it only being MSQ and everything side story related. You got to actually go and engage with the MMO part, which I think would be a fair compromise. Yeah, think, yeah. That, it does seem like a pretty fair compromise, especially because like it, it, even if like because like they mentioned how they want to do this because a lot of people avoid fourteen and eleven mm-hmm. because of their online games, but also. Even if you're not, even even if you just want to get through the story and you don't have a problem with them being online games, getting through the early content with more experienced players having to fill in the roles, it's not really the same thing. So like, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I do actually. I wonder because it's there's a bunch of dungeons in AR before level fifty that are technically not MSQ, and I wonder. If they do um, mean strictly MSQ, or if they're going to cover those as well. Cause... Yeah, that's that was my question. Like I was thinking about it, and it's Karn, um, or, the male Darkhold, Orm Vale, and Cutter and Cutter's Cry. Are, yeah, like, and all of those. I, all of those are no, all, except Karn. All of those are available Karn is fine. in command missions. I think so. Yeah, and um. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. I think a trust in like Orm Vale would be interesting, but not so interesting enough that I would be upset if they don't have it. I, yeah, I've run I I've run Orm Vale with command mission squadrons <laughs> like ten times while I was leveling stuff, and no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's not a good idea. So, but for those of us who've already done it, the really interesting part is who are the trusts going to be? That's the part that I like, yeah I find interesting from a established player perspective like it's it's cool that people will have this option they want to know who they're going to give us yeah, like they like, said like you know adventurer guild people but there aren't really any adventurer guild characters so are they going to make some new ones up or are they going to yeah. do some really deep dives pull out some people they could they are could, we going to get uh are involved for the uh um the primal fights because we can't take just really random good. people to primal fights yeah we're we going to get are involved are we going to get Harshafont in not just like in the vault, but are we going to get him in like um, a Snowcloak? Snowcloak, yeah. Totally reasonable for him to be available as a as a trust in Snowcloak. It would add yeah. a lot. Like having him available in the run up to like Snowcloak's the main one, but having him be part of the trusts in 
late ARR and Heaven's Word is yeah. going to make, like, make the stuff in the vault oh, yeah. really hit hard for some, for a lot of players. Yeah, it's like you because you, you can start involving him as early as like um, Stone Vigil. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can totally see yeah. him would be available. And the nice, I mean, and the cool thing is like they say about how this is like it's like they have to fine tune it for each trust, but I mean, most of the NPCs you can probably just be like. They could probably make like archetypes, like they have gladiator. So, and that could be Harshafont or Arnvald or some other, you know, random sword and shield dude. And it, they can use that for anybody. Yeah. So they, once they establish that, they don't have to like make it like, you know, Urian Jay has got his, his unique kind of astrologian and um, let's say he's a red mage, but she does things a little differently and that kind of stuff. They can just be gladiator, does gladiator things. And yeah. no one's going to be like, well, I don't, I'm, I don't. Because it's a it's a good way of conserving resources. What is it that Uriyanja's job is called when he's DPS in the Highlands? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a lithomancer. Lithomancer. He, um, I, yeah. I haven't done I haven't done it. I keep meaning to do it. Um, because you can only do it when you're leveling a healer. Yeah. When you're running on the healer, but I believe he actually pulls a carbuncle out and does you know summoner type stuff. Okay. Um. So. I'm expecting we're gonna, if depending on how they do it, we might see a few more flex characters. Like, I could see them just saying, "Okay, Harsha Font can be your tank, or you can be your DPS. He's got a sword; he can smack things with a sword." Gladiators aren't DPS, but it, what's the difference? Kryl could definitely be part of like some of the patch dungeons that she's mm-hmm. part. Definitely, of. yeah, she could be available as a as a as a conjurer easily. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna be the most interesting part is. Seeing how they do it, are they going to um, how they're going to adjust the dungeons? Because some of them are definitely going to need to be adjusted. They already talked about Toto Rock. Um, there's a couple others like um, Copper Bell, second boss fight in Copper Bell. Is oh. be weird with trust. Oh, yeah, hell, the first boss fight in Copper Bell is just like slow pouring down of okay. millions. I need to tell you about the Copper Bell I was in yesterday. Oh gosh. All right. So I, I, I queue for leveling on um, some leveling monk, um, and get a pop for for Toto Rock seven minutes in. I'm like, okay, I go in. Not even the first boss has been cleared. That's distressing. Oh my! Oh whoa! So I go in and I find these three sprouts: a, a um, a gladiator, a conjurer, and an archer. Okay, all oh. sub level thirty. I check; they have no other jobs. They're sub level thirty, and when I when I'm loading in, the archer and the conjurer are telling the gladiator to put on iron will, with the tank stance. And by the time I get down there, they haven't done it. <laughs> start pulling as soon as I show oh, up, they start no. pulling tank stance, and like it's copper bell. Two DPS and a and a and a conjurer can handle copper bell, but it's the principle of the thing. He's got to learn, right? We just the three of us, we just stop stuff and we tell him to turn on tank, turn on turn on iron will. Runs ahead into a into a group, starts to fight. We just stand there. He dies. Conjurer bring, brings him back up. He goes and does it again. We're like, what's going on? I'm jumping around near him. I'm poking him. He's not responding. They try asking him in other languages. Nothing happens. So we kick him and we get a leveling Dark Knight and we finish in minutes. <laughs> <sighs> That's the thing, though. Like. <laughs> Like, I, I mean, I haven't played. I haven't played the um, the Gladiator story in many expansions now, but I I do wonder, like, how, uh, like, like does does the story quests don't not teach you about the tanks? They don't. Stuff? They never mention it. Um, oh, give me yeah. um, a couple of things, but I don't think they give you. Yeah, they never the um. And also part of the pro- part of the problem is that the um Hall of the Novice doesn't have tank stance in it because it. It stands for um, just in, not be until like late, much later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, it, it, Marauder it, it used, used like to Warrior, be. we get it at 30. Yeah. 30 and warrior, Gladiator yeah. wouldn't, like, originally, Gladiator wouldn't get it, get it until 40. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. But now true. they all get it. Now they all get it at 15. So I'm hoping that they do some revamps of the Hall of the Novice. Maybe the trust for the first three dungeons, since there's no one really in the story who's reasonable for those. Are literally just people from the Hall of the Novice. Yeah, that would be a really. They're cool all right way to there. They're it. hanging out right there, 
and maybe they can even like add some special dialogue for specific specific <laughs> for roles. On like, like you you load into Sastasha and you've got like you know like you've got a healer from the from the the Smiths and he's like, all right, first thing you need to do is you need to you need to turn on you need to turn on you need to like, build up you need to you know build up your 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 resolve you need to turn you like, yeah build up your iron will or <laughs> feel your defiance you know stuff like that that's what i want to see they, i think that I would mean, be really they cool. could definitely they, they could even like actually rework, rework the hall of the novice into being the dungeons yeah like i think that would, that be would really probably cool. work better um so hopefully they'll do that um but the real i mean the really interesting parts is of course not the early dungeons no. It's the end of AR Dungeons. Yeah. It's so Cape that... West Wind. Rest, rest in peace, Cape I'm West kind of, Wind. But you know what? You know what? I, I actually, you know what? Riotin's really living really good now in his afterlife. Yeah. He's got a cool boss fight in Endwalker, and now he's going to get to be an actual memorable fight again. <laughs> well, hopefully. If, if, they, if, they, if they balance it well. But I think they, they're, they've gotten pretty good at solo instances. I think they can make his fight pretty neat as a solo instance. Honestly, it just kind of really, it just really makes me want them to do this thing where you can replay solo instances, though. Because like now, I I need to experience that solo instance now. So yeah, yeah. I really so want to do something like that one of these days. But... Um, I think um, ARR um, a new game plus is pretty granular compared yeah, to the others, uh, so it shouldn't be too parts. hard to. Yeah, so you can just jump to like the level forty ones and go from there. Yeah, um, that's probably that's totally worth doing. But yeah, um, I think Riotin's finally going to get his due, and um, I, mean, I really like, want to see. I really yeah. want to see what they do to Castro Meridianum and Praetorium as dungeons. As I was expecting them to do them as solo instances too. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was a little surprised the approach they took to those. It, it makes sense, but it, it wasn't the direction. I, I, I was expecting them to do something with that finally in this patch cycle because with all they've been doing in the past few expansion or so, it's like this is a big, glaring issue that had to finally be fixed. Yeah, but I, it wasn't. I was. This wasn't the, the direction I expected them to go with it. Um, but so I'm a little sad that my easy. Uh, brain dead relate MSQ relates will, will go away, but uh, I mean, I guess they're. I wonder if they're going to put them in leveling or um, uh, the five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, yeah. eight. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good question. The other issue is, um, I, maybe I missed it. Did they say exactly what they're? I think they said that they're some, certain parts of the game are being made into solo instances, but okay. there's still the cutscene so, issue if that, if that shows up in roulette. You are Ashram still Meridianum is becoming a four person dungeon. And I assume right. they're going to radically revamp the cutscenes in there. Yeah, that you, one. You that can one, cut uh, most of them, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, the most of them are pointless. With, with no consequence. That one's easy to deal with. It's, it's um, crazy. I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to do oh, with. Victorium. Four person dungeon. Okay. And I'm guessing that it's going to be the Goliath fight, the Nero fight, and then the. Um, uh, Ultima weapon. The, no, not Ultima weapon. Gaius fight, and they just—they're just going to move Gaius's big dialogue with him on the elevator to after the fight, and then that they can just cut out—they—they they, they oh. cut out the whole dialogue. They cut out the whole dialogue with Sid after the after the um. Uh, so you think Colossus, they're gonna... well, it's kind of interesting. It's not terribly useful. Then, there's still the five minute Sid. There's still the five minute uh, Nero cutscene. Well, they can cut a lot of stuff down. Okay, but then. Yeah. Ultima Weapon is becoming a four-person trial. Did right, they? Oh, right. so they did say that. Okay, I missed yes, that. Is, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, is, is, it's a four-person like trial. And then, fight with La Habrea at the very end is a solo instance. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was mainly so, like cut scenes. I wasn't sure what they were how they were going to handle that. What we do, what we have, what we have to assume is that they're going to keep the Magitek writing sequence because the Magitek is a pretty key part of the. End of the game. Yeah, you yeah. Can't, you can't cut that. They're going to cut most of the dialogue, so we make some of it into just bring battle text like, the, like we have in the current dungeons. Yeah, and just move the Gaius's whole speech to after the end of the dungeon, and it's a cutscene that plays after you beat him. That scene, that cutscene plays for ten minutes or however long it is. Yeah. Then you look. Then you get the prompt to start the ultimate weapon trial. Right. And you load in the trial. 
then when that ends the first time, you get a bunch of cutscenes. You get the prompt for the La Habrea solo instance. Right, yeah. Which is going to be a lot, but it's also the exact same structure as the end of Endwalker. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's a good structure. It works. Yeah. It works. I do wonder it, if it's actually going gonna... to make a. Is it's gonna it make a good callback. Yeah, definitely. And I do wonder if you they're gonna bring Walker. back the lost like dialogue options then from the guy is cutscene. Yeah, I might I imagine that they could do that. Yeah. So that's what I expect. I just expect um, a bunch of streamlining. Um, a lot of the running around in Castro Meridian is probably gonna get cut. Um, it's got perfectly serviceable bosses right now. You do the um, do the the match tech armor do the vanguard whatever they call them thing and then you do um livia and they'll just yeah, cut out you know, a bunch of the trash i mean strictly speaking you don't have to change much to livia for the first part but i do wonder if they might look at that and just go this part kind of is kind of awful. they actually what they might do what they might do is they might just um cut out the like you go you run in and you get to the first fuss fight against the magic tech Normally, you would then go into the trash chute and go do that whole go around. What if they just be like, okay, Sid jumps in the magic attack right then? Goes oh, out yeah, the door, and, cut out that and you just skip everything about blowing up the towers. Like maybe some other squad goes in and does that part. Yeah, that's actually a good idea because the stealth thing it doesn't work anyway. So like, so then no you just go up. Spotlight on it. You can still do the cannons. They could even have NPCs come in and do the cannons for you. The cannons, and you are just in charge of like you know cutting the boss around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could do that, or your party will do the do the cannons. Who knows? We'll see. Um, I think it'll be really interesting. I think Cash and Meridianum has a potential to be really neat as a four person dungeon. Yeah, wow. so, I mean, I like I like both of those dungeons in, in mm -hmm. theory. It's just that yeah, they're not the execution is not work. Good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they used to work. Like, they used to work, Back yeah. in ARR, Castrum was fine. It was actually a perfectly reasonable dungeon. You actually had to do, engage with the cannons or it just wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. Praetorium was a mess. Praetor go. Praetorium but used Castrum to have the stealth used... element where, like, no, if you walk along the wall, you won't trigger all these enemies. We'll <laughs> still do that anyway, even though it doesn't matter. It's really funny. Everybody just <laughs> automatically yeah. hugs that wall, even though that does not matter at all anymore. It's, it's the funniest thing. I, most people don't even know why they do it. They just do it because the first time they were in there, yeah. they did it. I don't know why. So. I do wonder if they'll get rid of having to use the, ter the terminal for the magnetic armor, though. Cause should, because that's just annoying. <laughs> people still yeah. miss that. I think the big question, we, we might be assuming they're doing a lot more to change the dungeon than they are, but if they, if they are going to be actually doing those that level of adjustments, I can't imagine they don't change that part. Um, I wonder if I'll still get to. I mean, I, I might have to change my um my setting for the um the way marks that spell out Sid where he blows up the door. <laughs> Always that up as soon as we get to that part. Oh, I realized. Wait, so, so Sid cannot be a trust member in that dungeon. No, he because can't. That He's not going to be a trust member. Hmm. I mean, as far as we know, Sid can't fight anyway. We've never actually seen Sid fight not using a. That is true, sword. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not that, that's not missing anything. He's a an engineer now like nero can fight <laughs> oh, I wonder. wait is there any point in the game where nero can join could possibly join us a trust not uh, i don't that think I know so of. oh they should they should, should, should make do. one they you should know make one you, the, you know who we talked to for to get into capstone right yeah Rabon. oh they could totally that is true Rabon. Rabon would be perfect for that. Rabon is a trust member. I could totally see them doing Rabon in there. Um, it's so, a shame yeah, that, we'll like see. the um, you know, in the the patches leading up to Stormblood, um, when we go and get Omega, it's a shame there's no dungeon there. That would have been perfect. Yeah, that would have been really good. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that's the trust so. stuff. Fix graphics. Graphic update. This, this I was or, like, or maybe uh, maybe we should say. Graphic, yeah, <laughs> yes. It was. It's kind of. It, we still don't know what it's going to look like technically because they only showed like these test images. But like, it's gonna look better. It's not gonna yeah. be amazing, but it's gonna look better. It's gonna have better lighting. It'll just be 
better. It's not going to better lighting blow anybody's mind. To the most because the lighting on on some cutscenes is awful. I don't God, know. Oh, yeah. yeah, the shadows in particular is like, like, it, like gross sometimes. When, when we met, um, what's his name? That um, the Gleaner, uh, the the Vieira boy. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I could not see him because it was at night. <laughs> He is like the darkest NPC in the entire game. Yeah, and it was at night. I could barely see my own character at night in Endwalker. I realized I had my gamma too low later on, and you are in fact supposed to be able to see the the ground in Ultima Thule. <laughs> Still, it's really dark in some scenes, and it doesn't work for dark skinned characters. Yeah, it really didn't work for him. Like he was just like invisible. It was so funny. I don't know if I have a screenshot of that anywhere, but I was. He may as well have just been like glitched out and not there. Yeah, it was very see, funny. See, seeing like uh, the 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 way they can do lighting improvements uh, in general is going to be really good because you have to fact that they can have more light spots. That's going to help yeah. so much. The game, really, the game like, has a very flat look, but it's like, it's a good look. Yeah. But it's a very flat look right now. So and people don't really understand how hard lighting is. Like, yeah. I've tried to like light some scenes in Skyrim, and Skyrim is like from about the same era. It's yeah. a, it's it, it's about it's a couple years before ARR, but I would say that it's probably like in the ballpark of the same level of technology. Yeah. And for the same I system. mean, Skyrim it just falls apart if you start to do more than more than like four or five lights in a single in a single room. And if you put shadow casting lights in there, well, you're just you, you're just asking for trouble. Yeah, so. my main experience with like working with light in 3D was like doing maps for Doom Three, which yeah, like yeah, light is light is very tricky. So oh. it's gonna be it's, it's gonna very, be cool very, to see. It's very graphic processor intensive. That's yeah. the big issue. Lights are super intensive on your graphic processor. Um, so someone mentioned it. And somewhere on when I was reading a Reddit thread, and I actually need to pull up my screenshots to compare. Somebody said that they had actually changed the texture of the Mikote's ears. And they had said specifically they didn't have any new textures there. But someone said they noticed that it was different. I need let me pull that up and see if I can see. Mm. Apparently Makote ear textures are mostly just flat and they're you yeah. they use them um detail map stuff to make them look they have actual depth. Yeah. Which you can tell if you go and look closely at them. And I'm I'm looking now and they're not. It's the same texture. It's the same thing. Same model, same texture. Um so. uh, that's one thing they could do. That's one thing they could do is they could make that a a more defined polygon and put a better texture, and that would help the Makote significantly. Definitely. Um, because I'm pretty certain Vieira ears are actually like properly modeled. I would have to check. I think so. Um, like, because like that's the thing. Like a lot of the, a lot of the like worst looking parts right now, especially on the character models, are just because of you know the legacy stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so it's... you can really tell the difference. Like if you look at a Makote compared to an Aura or a Viera, yeah. Like in the, how their faces model stuff, you can really tell. Um, there are more polygons in an Aura and Viera face than there are in a Makote face. Yeah lot um it's going it's going to be it's going to be cool to see like how they do that because like I, I was absolutely really happy that they mentioned that they didn't want to go realistic they just wanted to like yeah. improve what they have with the art direction then they also talked about how they weren't they're not sure what to do about the skin on lalafell because like yeah they, they mean, are super like, smooth right now. yeah it's like i mean it's a good point because like lalafell really fall apart if you don't keep it significantly cartoony yeah it just doesn't work yeah. So uh, I mean, we'll have to see what happens, but um, it's like that's a pretty legitimate concern. Lalafell are very like not in the same category as all the others. Like the all the others, you can en enhance that texture stuff, and it'll look it'll look a lot better. But it's going to mm. be weird for Lalafell if they don't do it right. But the, the, the test renders look good, though. I mean, it basically looked yeah. like you know. The pre-rendered yeah, ones shade. that we're used to seeing. It's all shaders and stuff, but it works. Like the the, the improved um, one thing they can do is um improve the texture on old hairs. Yeah, some of the hairs are really bad. Oh yeah, really like e e even some of like the popular ones, the lightning hair has like some really awkward texture. Oh, yeah. Um, 
one of the ones I used for a while. Which one was it? Um, I think it may have been the 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 he may cut one. Oh yeah, and some really bad like aliasing on it. Mm-hmm. It's like. They didn't mention anything about improving the anti-aliasing. I don't know if they can even do that without even bigger updates to the engine. Um, but yeah, like it... anti-aliasing is tricky because they don't want to abandon the PS4 yet either, which is a good call. Um, but but yeah. it looks like they fixed the shadow problem, mm-hmm. which is good because the shadows are terrible. I mean, I don't like it. Doesn't bother me at this point. Like a lot of this graphic stuff, it's like. People complain about this stuff, and I'm like, eh, it's fine. I've I've played worse. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not a huge problem, but it, like, it's nice having better shadows. If you look at the Titania picture, the shadows are way better now. Yeah, and Just also the, the so mentioned that they would like up the um, the update rate on the yeah. shadows because like Cause when they, you have they moving flicker. shadows, they get very jumpy. And they flicker really bad. Yeah. So. But I mean, again, shadows are hard. Shadows yeah. are one of those things that it's it seems oh it's you just it's just cast it out no it, it's. It's really hard, and the game does better than you would expect in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally don't think they have made the um, the gold elephant gaudy enough yet. <laughs> yes, it needs to shine more. I need to be. I need to go into the Stormblood treasure dungeons and not be able to see. Then it will be fine. <laughs> we need. We need, we need the Endwalker be. treasure dungeons to really have that neon lights. Just oh, oh man, I, I will. Um, and then um, one funny thing is like that um that scene in um, um Favnair where they showed all adding all the extra clutter. Yeah, reminded me of some um Skyrim city improvement mods where the main thing they do is they just throw a whole bunch of clutter all over the place. <laughs> it it did feel like someone just like placed <laughs> objects and activated like a physics engine and called it. A I, li- I like the extremely uneven stairs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get they're doing it to show, like, you know, this is what they can do now, yeah, yeah. but it's still very funny, because it reminds me of some the more um, mediocre Skyrim improvement mods that I have seen over the years. Um, yeah, graphics. Um, they spend a lot of time on it, but there's not much to say. No. It looks, Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, hopefully. Like, that, that, that's going to be the one that takes the longest before we see the actual outcome, because they're aiming nothing, for the nothing. update in 7.0, so... Things happening there till seven point oh. Um, we might see some pictures, but honestly, I would not expect anything concrete until the fan fests. Yeah, it's probably. It's like, also, said multiple, also said there's multiple steps to it, so we might see some of it earlier, and then. It might yeah, have well, they got to get it set up, but they might they might try to put in some stuff early. But what I my understanding was that don't expect anything major until yeah. seven point yeah. oh. I did like yeah, though that they mentioned that in one point oh they had the cloth texture. That was like really nice yeah. detail that they couldn't do anymore, and they're gonna try to bring that back. Like, yes, yeah, that's, that's nice. Mean, so yeah, like a lot of people to, like who talk about this stuff. It's like I've done a lot of like modding for Skyrim and Oblivion, so I've dealt a lot with textures and working on lots of pieces of equipment. And yeah. the level of stuff they have they have to go through in this game is un- like not even comparable. It's yeah. like unbelievable i could make a list of every piece of equipment and say oblivion and go through and do stuff on it and it would take me a couple like a week if i wasn't doing anything else major you could have it would take you months to go through all the equipment in this game yeah and it's yeah, there's and so like, much stuff yeah. in this game like, people do not understand how many Things they have put in this game over the last. That's the thing. Like no one actually does everything in Final Fantasy fourteen, and it's not because everything isn't good. It's because you can't really do everything. Yeah. I mean, like here's a question: When's the last time you looked at the equipment that drops in, say, Hawking Man or Hard Mode? Do you have well, any idea what that even is? E- I was, even any idea what that is? I was no. so ready to say that uh, that oh I have, but then you said Hard Mode, so no. No, it, it has it. It has along with the other dungeons that drop that patch, its own unique set yep. of equipment that nobody ever uses. Yep, because it's useless and it doesn't look very good. But it's there. It exists. So if they do <laughs> stuff to the game, they either have to ignore it or do something with it. I mean, are they going to say touch the dark light gear? <laughs> are they? It's there. Yeah, I do I mean, wonder it's, if. And it's, it's, are they going to deal with the um, 
augmented, not the augmented, the um, the alternate colored AF1 gear that you can get from the the exchanges from the like snow cloak. Oh yeah, that existed. We actually uh, actually talked with uh, a friend about that today because like she saw a a red dyed white mage trope and she was like like entirely red dyed white mage trope. It's like how. Does that exist? And it's like, oh yeah, they've been in the game for eleven years. <laughs> but there's just so much stuff in this game. I mean, it's unbelievable when you really go through yeah. and think about it. Like, I could probably name something, like a piece of equipment that none of you you, you had ever even thought about before. In fact, I probably just did. Had you ever yeah. thought about the Hockey Man or Hard no. Mode equipment before ever no. in your life? No, I, I don't even look at I don't even look at most dungeon gear. I mean, yeah. some more recent expansions I sometimes look a little bit just go to see if it looks interesting. But yeah, I don't even part, roll on that because it's not worth anything in seals. It's like three hundred yeah. seals. So what? It's yeah. two thousand seals for a drop from from the for an expert expert roulette. Why would I bother yeah. rolling on stuff that drops in five, six, seven, eight? Yeah, when I when I do really low level dungeons or like anything before like Stormblood at this point, I just I race to hit the pass button so that no people can't force me to take it in my inventory. <laughs> Exactly. I've actually gotten a bit annoyed at the fact that you get stuff from the leveling dungeons because it, it clutters up my inventory. I, I oh, get annoyed with the guaranteed drop on those also, yeah. It should, in my opinion, it should stop giving you that after you if you run it on a job that's at 90. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's actually a good idea. I was, I, I, I was, was going to say far- that after your first People want to farm that stuff, yeah. but on the other hand, I'm like, really annoying for everybody else, so... I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there should be a toggle and duty finder. Yeah. I'll pass yeah. all drops. Oh, yeah, that should Might be, be a, a pretty, pretty good idea. I, I don't know. Next, next Q&A, maybe write that in. <laughs> <laughs> I just had that thought, but that seems like actually a perfectly reasonable thing to add. And you can yeah. only do it if, you, if your job is at level cap. Yeah. There you go. If you're well, at I, level cap, think, you're queuing for a dungeon or a roulette, cap. auto pass all drops. I don't think there needs to be a level cap requirement for that, but um, it oh. could also make it so it stops dropping the guaranteed one if you get toggled off, toggle it for that, but I don't think there needs to be a level requirement it, for those. I thought they were never going to add the Etherite ticket option, and there they didn't, then they added it. So now I can use Etherite tickets without it driving me nuts. So <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I never bothered to use them because they drove me nuts to have to hit the confirm every time. Yeah. yeah. I felt the, I felt I, the guilt payment was worth it. Doing those for that reason. But now it's like, hey, I'm just going to, I'll do my weekly hunts, and I'll just buy Etherite tickets, and I'll have more Etherite tickets than I can ever possibly need. Yeah. yeah. I actually haven't been doing my weekly hunts. I need to do that. Um, honestly, the Endwalker uh, daily hunts are really good. If you do all of them, it's a half level worth of XP. Yeah, they're actually pretty good. I, I, I stopped doing it when I started doing crafting leveling instead. But yeah, so the thing, the thing is, I used to like try to really squeeze out the XP like in Heaven's Word. I did, I, I did hunts to help with to help with my XP. The thing is, it is so easy to get XP in so yeah. many ways now. I'm not. I'm going to have all my jobs level cap before I run out of stuff. That other things to do that happen to get XP. Yeah, that. I mean, so, that's one reason why I haven't been you know like, see my ass to get stuff leveled because it's like it's gonna it goes really fast. Like I got monk. Eighty one to eighty four in a couple hours the other day, so it's like yeah, whatever. yeah. Thank, thankfully, this expansion they realize they have like twenty jobs now. They don't need to have levels ceiling uh, for individual jobs take as long as it did back in ARR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Oh man, I remember were... it used to feel like it took forever. Like it did. I mean, anyway. So, um, roadmap future co- future content yeah. future content. Um. Main scenario will be main scenario stuff. There yeah, will be a main literally scenario. Literally, no idea. It will. It will. Ah. It will exist. My uh, my thoughts on it are: so we're gonna, each patch, we're going to get a little vignette focused on somewhere where there's a scion, establishing what they're doing and what they're going to be doing for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, yeah, that and makes then, sense. And then around end of six point four, six point five, we're going to get something that'll lead us into 7.0. Yeah, potentially something. what they could also do is that like every patch focuses on like where one or a group of science and so on some of the some of the cases are. And at the end of that story, like that scion discovers something or something that we don't really find out yeah. more about. And then it all I think, comes together. Yeah. I mean I hope we get a new meanwhile in location. Yeah. Because I'm I'm gonna miss. Meanwhile, 
Garlay and Capital. Yes. Oh, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile like, on the first. I mean, they were like they did that all the way from like four point three or something. Yeah. Like, a good quarter of this game's life, every single patch ended with that. Yep. And you don't really yeah. think about that, but it did. It was it's so funny in retrospect. I mean, technically, Endwalker did because the last thing that happened was this back in the day in Elpis. Yeah, so like. like... That, no, that, that, that's the teaser that we always <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I hope they come up with something like that, because honestly, I know people joked about it and stuff, but I really like those. I thought those yeah. were really neat. It was a great way yeah, to end it. Was... And it, it, it felt like, you know, it, it really felt like watching an anime. It really yeah, did. Yeah, it was great. Um, so yeah, there'll be, there'll be something. Who knows? It could be literally anything. We have no idea. Yeah, we'll get our first piece of that on March 4th. On, for the first time ever, we have no idea what's going to happen next. It's exciting times. Got a list of thing. We have a list of names of things that could, at some point in the future, come up. Yep. We know Sometime nothing in the about next them. Thirty years. <laughs> I, I think the thing we know the most about that could happen in the future is Maricidia. Yeah, you Maricidia. Know, we we kind of know what happens on Maricidia. Know a bit about what's happening in the New World. That's I, it. I, I almost think that New World could is do something more entirely likely, different. Yes, because Maricidia would be like. Another dragon story. So yeah, I do think I, that's that's kind of my thought is they're going to hold off. They're going to hold off a little bit longer because when they go to Maricidia, they got to bring Midgar Zorber back. Oh yeah, <laughs> and they re and it really feels like they want to just like not do that yet. Yeah, because yeah, they, they could have, they yeah they go went out of their way to Omega. not do it this time. They went out of their way to not do it this time. Yes. Now, now here's one thing I didn't we didn't talk about last week, but. I just, it just stuck out to me that in the main story, they they, they kind of made, made really sure to remind us there's a dragon out there that we don't know, we don't really know what's going on with them. Yeah, with them. that's actually really interesting because they hadn't ever brought up Azdaja before. Yeah, ever. yeah. The only way, in fact, the only way you even knew Vritra existed is if you read the lore book or somebody told you. Yeah, yeah. Either that's of them had stuck out. like it, the game was really going like, hey, don't forget this one's out there somewhere. Something's going on, but who knows what it is? I mean, I can't no. swear to it. But I'm pretty certain that neither Vritra nor Azdaja were ever mentioned at all in the game. If they were, Endwalker. it would have been in 1.0 stuff. Uh, um, and I don't even think then. Yeah, I mean, we knew about the brood, and I think we knew about the number. I think at yeah. some point it was mentioned that Midgar Zormer had seven offspring. Yeah. I just and assumed we, they all got named at some point. I, I couldn't remember them. By I, am, I am positive that the first time we had names for them was in the lore book because Ethis went nuts about it. Oh. Yeah. He lost his mind about it when we had that picture of them in the lore book. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, he just yeah, was like, exactly. completely geeking out over it. So it went, yeah, they went out of their way to, they had went out of the way to have Richard go, oh yeah, and I tried to contact Azdaja, but I still don't know where the hell he is. <laughs> That's almost a direct quote. Yeah, and they also went out of the way to have him say, "Oh yeah, I tried to talk to Midgar's armor, but he's still out of it." So, luck. Yeah, which makes me think that they're gonna for they're gonna bring Omega into MSQ at some point as well. Probably will. I like, think they kind of have to if they're gonna bring Midgar's armor back ever. So my 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 thoughts on seven point are new world or something we have no idea about. Yeah. Honestly, I'm I, honestly I'm leaning towards something we have no idea about. Probably. Um. Okay. So main scenario will be something island sanctuary. What do you think it's going to be? Um. I don't know. My like I thought for a while that that might be Mercedia related, but I saw I'm someone sure. mention at one point that it, that could be the Southern Islands that uh, Phoenix Salt mentioned, but I have... so could be I guess it's an island, and we got a bajillion islands on this map. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but, but, but someone, someone suggested. Was... Okay, go ahead. Saw someone suggest it could be in the southern isles that are between um, southern part of Eorzea and Maricidia. Yeah, which could give us a nice way of just sort of inching down towards Maricidia, like just oh, reminding yeah. people that it's there. Could just be some island off the coast of Vilbrand. Could be off of Hingashi. Could be literally anywhere. Yeah, it's it, 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 we we didn't really get the new information on it this time, except that it will there will be areas Exist. added to it throughout the patches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I would say that's probably not going to be near Charlene 
because that feels a little too um, old. Yeah. For the way they're kind of establishing it. So I'm thinking more southern. But it could be anywhere. There's a bajillion islands. There's more yeah. islands than we could ever. They could just plop one down and say, here, that's that's the island. Yeah, it's always been there. Of course it has. Is there any reason it. Is there anything indicating that it, it, it can't be like something new in Elpis? I mean, like there's no reason it should be, but I mean, I don't think it'll be in Elpis. I, don't I think, think they're no, going to save Elpis stuff for the raid and maybe super special stuff, but I can't imagine them doing it there. I can't imagine them doing it on the first. It would be weird. I don't even think yeah. the first has a coastline anymore, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only coastline left on the first is on, uh, is on collusion. No one wants to do that in collusion anymore. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, speaking of raids, so we still don't really know much about Mists of the Realm or Pandemonium, so we don't really need to go over those. But I know. Know. what do you think the chances are that we fight all four of the gods? Lines up exactly right with the number of bosses. Yeah, I think mm. we won't because it's too obvious. Yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say. It feels too obvious. We, We're we definitely gonna fight some of them. Yeah, I expect it to be some of them, but not not all. There'll be something um, else going on. But... What it is going to be, though, is it's going to be the biggest retcon you have ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. This is going to make Shadowbringers um, Ashian backstory stuff is going to make it look like, oh yeah, that was definitely planned all along. This is going to this is going to completely eliminate huge swaths of 1.0 lore. Yeah, <laughs> destroy it. Uh, it's it's going to be. Very interesting, because like if we go by the fact that it's going to be what um, uh, Emmett Selk said at the end of Endwalker, that it's basically us finding out who those twelve actually were. Yeah, because whatever they are, they are not what we what the original lore said they are. Yeah, like, there's no way. Um, amount the amount that the AR the um current team has not cared about the religious aspect of this whole setting is incredible. It's yeah, really it cool. Kevin, we, we have an entire, like, have Catholic elves who worship uh, Sword Lady Jesus. Yep. It basically never came up. Like, the, the details of their religion is almost entirely irrelevant to Heaven's Word, other than that it exists. But, like, it's really funny, because, like, Final Fantasy fourteen, it keeps, like, bringing in these various religious figures or religious groups, and then basically they only ever bring up the religion if it's time for us to go and kill it. They only yeah. exist as power structures. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a feeling that like whatever we find out in there, we're not going to be telling very many other people because it would screw everything up. <laughs> yeah. We're going to know. It's going to be the so, next Zone 5. I mean, I am more convinced that the Aura God and Goddess, um, Dusk Father and the Dawn Mother, I'm more convinced that they exist as described by the Aura than any of the Eorzean gods. Uh, um, so, I somehow think, further Hildebrand adventures. And I, I, that, That's such a perfect like description of it because somehow these keep happening. <laughs> I don't think they ever somehow actually Hildebrand return. people. So I, 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 I still need to do the, the Stormblood Hildebrand quests. I'm going to do it sometime in the next couple of weeks, finally. I, really good. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Yeah. Um, so they're good, man. The Heaven's Word ones were so bad, I was just not interested. They were not very good. The Stormblood ones are really funny, though. They're, they're actually really, really good. Wait, so have you not um, done the uh, the trial in Stormblood? No, I, 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 I remember hearing about it a while back. I'm vaguely aware of what it is, but I've never done it. Okay, because oh, okay, I, I did that at the fan fest before it was in the game. So it was like really oh, yeah. strange. Like, am I allowed to talk about this, or is that spoiling a patch that isn't out yet? <laughs> Uh, Yozora, without actual spoilers, did Nashu go with M at the end, or is she still with us? She's still with us. Okay, that's what I thought. Just double check. Speaking of, I wonder if her Could... sister is going to show up this year or not. Oh, yeah. The songbirds weren't here last year. They haven't had them for a while. They wanted to give them a break, which was good. Yeah. Um, it would be nice to see them again. I wonder how related they are. They are Makote, and you can never tell. <laughs> Like they got the same last name, which means that come from the same general group. It's like the 
Uh, let's see. Of a key, of a keeper no, because no, th they are keepers, so that means that keepers. They are, um, which means, and they get the you get the last name from, from your mother. The mother, but yeah, so I they're don't actually, think it's they're... always the same mother because it's it's a. I'm not certain how that works. It's, yeah, there's so much it, vaguer the, on um, there's so much vaguer on keeper stuff. Yeah, because the seekers, seekers have the very clear clan thing. So it's like all the Tia are from the same clan. Yeah. Same so thing not, with um yeah. so a bunch like there's a bunch of Ali Pose running around and we know two of them are definitely sisters, but there's a couple others. Um and we don't know. It's them. it's all just recycled Final Fantasy Eleven Mithra names anyway. Yeah. There's like five million Ali Pose, so that I know they can't all be related. Yeah, there's um <laughs> There's the there's the, the Joe, Zoe and Chloe, but there's also one who is a reporter. Yeah, I remember Danya. a reporter showing up in a couple of quests. Oh yeah, and I think there's a fourth one that showed up somewhere in a really minor way. There's someone in Charlian, I'm pretty sure. I, I, yeah. I remember Dalia Poe showing up in in, uh, in a, a seasonal event. So I think uh, she did the Valentine's a, quest last year or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember For Easter. What's the? I, I think it was. I think. I think like last year's Easter quest. Yeah. I think left. she's in. Oh Aliapo yeah. Wait. Um. That's the thing too. We like, got. G, we have Julie Aliapo, Lee Aliapo, Key Aliapo, Zoe Aliapo, and Chloe Aliapo. Julie is Julie Aliapo is the Egg Lady. Okay. Right? Yeah. Lee is at the Archer's Guild. She is the Mikote Lady who's in the Archer quest. Oh yeah. And then Key. Is who is key? She is um in old Charlene. She is the uh, crafting people in uh, Charlene. I haven't done done hers yet. So we're also getting Tatoru's grand endeavor. And I'm honestly, is, I'm honestly and, more not, excited about that than yeah, I am about. Same. Um, I was gonna say. That. I was gonna say that's probably the thing. Other than, other than the Mist of Realm, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. To see what they like, do with her. You generally know what's gonna happen with with um Zelda Brand. There's going to be shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, Tataru, this could be anything. I mean, we know she's already established. To, she's, yeah, she's she's already established that her, her, um, her carbuncle yeah. never despawned, which is like unheard of. Um, so, I don't know. There, all sorts of stuff could happen here. Maybe did we'll I get her something? as a trust. Yeah. So, did I miss something, or did they actually say what this weapon enhancement thing was about? Uh, that's the like relic. It's the, the new relic, relic stuff. It's whatever oh, that's up. It's, it's, it's the new relic shaped thing, okay, or whatever that, it is. That, being. Yeah, they stopped calling them Just relics. The, so, the yeah, weapon enhancements I, now. They have I never. I on that slide, and I wasn't paying as much attention as I could have, so I wasn't sure if they actually addressed it at all. But yeah, no, that, they that will. They have never called anything other than the, the ARR ones relics, ever. Even right, though that's right, a yeah. word. Fan the fan the players ever use for them ever. They have never done it. They will yeah. never ever call them relics. They will always have their own name and have this really awkward like weapon enhancement title of the whole concept. Um, they're very picky about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I knew I knew relic was a fan thing, but I just yeah. So yeah, there. it bounced around in that slide, so it was kind of a little, a little hard to follow. So yeah, we little, don't know engine. Don't know what that is. Um, it could be anything. I am imagining it will have some sort of Eureka or Bajja like zone. Yeah, probably. Because it it seems to work, and despite people on Reddit whining, most players seem to enjoy them well. Yeah, it, yeah, Bajja in particular seemed seemed to go over really well. I think they said at one point they had a huge uh, engagement with from the population, yeah. which is a good uh, sign. I, yeah, I'm I miss Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eureka we'll see how it goes. Fun, but we'll see. I think there's, I think there's a balance they can strike. I yeah. like, I like, I like the idea of the skirmishes where you had a more strike structured boss fight, and I think that would be really yeah. neat. I do but think. I mean, I do, I do appreciate. Eureka was cooler. I do appreciate that. Like the they all they don't just do something simple and stick to it though. Like they have done different things with each relic weapon. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, so, so trust. We talked about that. Criterion dungeons. Do you have any idea what those are? No. The, the, that's something they just announced. Criterion dungeons, which will be dungeons with a variable difficulty based on how many players, up to four, are brought into them, and I mean, that's all we really know. I'm curious as to whether the difficulty is strictly tied to the number of players, or whether you can adjust it otherwise. 
Yeah. Can you yeah, yeah. adjust I difficulty for as a for a solo, or can you like can you or is it just only like it's supposed to be the same amount of difficulty each way? And if so, how hard will it be? Cause... Yeah, I, I initially assumed the variable difficulty was like some other sort of scaling system, not just the number of players. Uh, but I, I just missed that part of the slide. I mean, they were very so... vague about it. Yeah. And um, at this point, um, Aimee was getting very tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I was getting tired from having to pronounce ridiculous names that the English localization team decided on. Yes, yeah. she was like at this point in the letter. You could tell that she was like not, not all together with it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's be interesting if it's going to be. I, what what I really wanted the most is if is if if it's going to be like three dungeons that are part of like a storyline or a narrative, where it's going to be just like a new type of content, and these three ones are completely separate. What I think, yeah, yeah. Well, and they didn't comment think, at all about about regular dungeons, right? They didn't say other than that they will, other than they will exist. Yeah, okay. there will be dungeons in the MSQ like normal. Yeah, okay. So, so, so these are separate it. from that. Yeah, they're well, not yeah, deep yeah. dungeons. I fear they were separate. I just was not sure if they if they said anything about the numbers of dungeons. Yeah, there will be there will be one dungeon, down. one per patch, at least one trial per patch, the whole normal stuff. Everything yeah. that's happened before is still happening. Yeah. So here's what I think, though. I think these are how they're going to start doing hard modes again. These will be places that we have been before and are going back to different, like, you know, hockey versus hockey hard. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. That could actually work, yeah. There are some places that we definitely would like to go back to. With them dropping the hard mode concept, we haven't had a chance to do it. But there's definitely some that you feel like you could go back there and get some more story out of them. You could do more things out of those. Yeah. This might be a good way of doing it. Definitely. They could, also, be, they could be completely new. Um, they could use them to fill in some of the empty spaces in the world. Maybe one of them is behind that door in the North Shroud. I was going to say, maybe maybe we get somewhere in Gilmora. That's not the... Yeah, the yeah. exactly that. Like, that. Like, I, I personally don't think it will be Gilmora, at least not these, because that's a little too close to Deep Dungeon still. Yeah. So I think they're going to hold off on that. But it's either... It's like okay, it's either something old or something new is incredibly like well, obviously it is. It's it's it can't. <laughs> there's no other choice. <laughs> I do think it will be either specific like revisits of specific dungeons, or something like entirely bespoke to the content. Yeah, and we know nothing. Like we have no idea what structure they're going to go for this. It's it's like you could say anything about it. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how a lot of this is. It's just it's going to exist. You can, we'll yeah. get back to you about it. What it actually is in yeah. a month. So or we'll six. know in. It's not coming until six point two, so it'll be another. What is it? Five, six months. Four yeah. and a half months or so. Four months. Something like that. Or no, it's, more than that, like five months. Yeah, because it's, it's it, when it, when it's six point one, it'll be four months after that. It should be early April, so yeah. about like a little less than a month. That's so like five weeks from now, probably, because we got the um first live letter in two weeks. Next one should be about two weeks after that. Oh yeah, so about about uh, about five months, a little over five months then. Um, ultimates dragon song will have no is starting in the vault, so we're starting fighting. What's his name and probably a couple of the others of the heavens. I, yeah, so yeah. Ab- about this. So like, I I am so behind on like high end content. What like which one is ultimate and which one is unreal? Like, what's the difference? Oh, okay. So unreal is old trials from like ARR, old extreme trials brought up to the current level cap. So like okay. they are adding in six point one. Uh, remember, you remember Ultima's Bane, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The extreme version of Ultima weapon. That's getting an Unreal, so you will queue into it as a level 90, go in as a level 90, and it will be essentially the same, if not a little harder, than it was back in, like, 2.1. Okay. Ultimate I'm totally, is the I'm, one of us are ever doing. <laughs> and then Ultimate is them, like, saying, okay, so you wanted hard content, here's your hard content, shut up. Take a week um, on vacation and hope you get it, hope you get it done before you have to go back. It's a complete reimagining of some of a set of fights. Like the first one was oil, so it started with Twintania, went to Nail, and finished with Bahamut, and then you and at certain points you fought all three of them and all that kind of stuff. Okay, this one yeah. starts in the vault. We know that because they showed us the opening map, and it looks like it has the three vault bosses, and they're there. You're probably fighting them to start. And then you, uh, the signs indicate that we are at some point fighting Needhog, and then Thornton, and then probably some 
amalgamation of them. Or then with both of Needhog's eyes, maybe? Who knows? Uh, you know, it could be interesting if they do some sort of duo fight where they're fighting each other and you like, they won't do actual damage to each other. Well, maybe they could, but it could be some sort of double. And that would be really cool. I don't know if they're going to ever do that. I, I, it seems like it would be very difficult to do, but it would be, would be cool. And yeah. very thematically appropriate. That feels like something, you know, that feels like something they would that you could do in a twenty four man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. No, no, anyway, no, actually, the uh, the fight, some of the previous fights have this these cinematics, so it could be like D Dog comes and does so, something for and vice versa. But yeah, yeah. For this well, one, it's going to be some of the Heaven's Word, Need Hog, Thornton, and probably some other. It's always a, there's always some final final form. Yeah. Movement. Yeah, there's some final form. Um, it's Golden new. Muhammad, uh, Silver Ultima, Frick Alexander, and then whatever they do here. Um, and then Ultimate Five. This is where things get interesting. Got a bunch of choices they can make here. Hydlin and Zodiac would be a pretty obvious one. They're, they aren't going to do that. Yet. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that yet. That's definitely they, they're trying to keep this like even moving through like or... through expansion. So if they did like the first one was Coil, right? And the second one was kind of oh, like the ARR uh, trial series. ARR yeah. didn't really have a trial series the way the other expansions do, but it kind of was because it was uh, Ifrit, Garuda, Titan, Ultima. Yeah. Um, and then we got um, Alexander, which is, of course, Heaven's Word. Heaven's Word Raid. Now we're getting Heaven's Word, like, main story. So if Heaven's Word starts trials, we could do the Warring Triad again. Um... I don't know if they will. I don't know how, if there's as much nostalgia for those. Or if they're going to go and do like Omega. And then yeah. with Omega, you got some questions. Like, you actually got a couple things you get out of Omega. You could do um, like a, you could do like uh, X Death, F Cut, and Chaos as like classic Final Fantasy final bosses. It's its own, like, your own thing. And reorder them, make it start with uh, Chaos, go to X Def, go to Kefka, and then fight some like crazy uh, mono inspired. Yeah, throw, throw in Cloud of Darkness three. in there, we already have ours. Uh... Yeah, throw in, Cloud, like, throw in Cloud of Darkness, we could do that. Um, or we could do just Omega Omega stuff, like uh, and start you include, with like you uh, include a Midgard Summer for that, for that match. Like, do like some sort of like wild level checker fight. Like start with like a, a huge <laughs> level checker, which I think would be hilarious. Just yeah. like a gigantic level checker. Yeah, I'm kind and of surprised then, they haven't done that already. Actually, for a long time, I thought that's what that's what Key was. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed when I actually got to fight Key. Um, still need to go. I still need to fight Key at some point, but I don't really care. Uh, who knows? They, the bunch of stuff they can. It's really do. weird because it's really awkward to fit in the bosses from the earlier tiers with the actual Omega part. Like you could do it, but it it's just. Because the way the storyline for that worked is kind of weird. Yeah, so, it's like if you're, you're going to do the, the thematic cohesion, it feels like you need to have Midgard Sommer and then Omega and then the Omega, Duo Omegas from, yeah. so I think, from last tier. I think if it's an Omega stuff, it's not going to have any of the first two tier stuff. Just not at all. Probably, yeah. Because that's not what people like out of that, that, that raid. Like That's not what the thing people really want. But it's particularly thematically good right now. Yeah. Now there is one other set of trials. That they're not. They're not going to do this probably. But there is an option: the Hildebrand trials from ARR. That'd be funny. Oh my <laughs> god, that would be very funny. Oh man, that, that would be, be amazing. Really this would be amazing funny. for a couple ways because it would also like make a certain segment of people really mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah, that would, be, that would be so good. Oh, just a just just a pure Gilgamesh ultimate. Gil I'm, Greg so, I'm, I'm sorry. Are, are you suggesting that the poor gaslit people on Reddit are <laughs> not going to appreciate the Hildebrand Ultimate? Yeah, that would be so good. But you know, it, no, it, yeah, Greg Ultimate. That is perfect. Greg Ultimate. Yes. There's also, I guess, for, I don't uh, for know Storm if Blood. they are going to do Stormblood MSQ though. That's the thing I was gonna say. It's really awkward to do that one. I don't think people care much about the stuff that happened I there. I don't know. Like, once again. It would be bringing back Xenos. It would be bringing back yeah. Xenos and yet another dragon fight, probably. So, yeah. God, there's so I many mean, dragons in this game. I saw I some that. stuff with, from Mr. Happy stream where um, he talked about how the idea of, of using the eye of the dog as a connecting the connecting tissue, since he uses that. Oh yeah, and bring in like in um and like bring in um 
so, so yeah, they're to, not going to do that. No. But he would have to appear in no this way. one. So yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think they're going to do one for for MSQ for um for Show and Blood. I just don't think they're going to. If it, they definitely won't do it next. They might do it a couple expansions down the road when people are less Xenos out. But yeah. I think, I think everybody just wants to take a break from Xenos. Yeah. But I also just think for but what they should do really awkward to get that that, that dynamic cohesion they they use for these. But what they should do though is they should make like it's just a super hard solo version of that last Xenos fight. <laughs> you can queue in just whenever you want to. And you can just like and it will just like this the hardest thing in the game. <laughs> that they should just do that. It's like, okay, um, you know how you have like six lives or whatever in that? You don't you got one life. Like, he just, oh, yeah. uh, he's, he's, he's tuned, he's tuned, like, they tune him per roll, so, like, if you're a tank, he, like, will just slap the heck out of you. If you're a healer, you get a massive healing debuff, that kind of stuff. I was gonna say, because, like, just make it the I, hardest like, thing if in you, the game. If, when, because when you fight him as a caster, and you get to the part where, like, you get down for the count, he takes a life from you at full health. Like, he just does so, that. So, you, you cannot one life should, him. They sh- should do it, or I mean, if you want, they wouldn't be like, maybe just make it so you have to do it on Reaper. You have to fight in Reaper versus Reaper. <laughs> Don't like that? Well, sorry, tough cookies. They're doing big PvP revamps. I took Reaper into into front lines the other day just to see how it was. Eh, front line still sucks. I... Um, it was it was it was Borderland Ruins, and I hate that one. I'm gonna try again someday when it's um Jatter and see how I feel about it. Yeah, I need like to actually like do. I need to actually like look at my PvP hot bar and figure out what everything yeah. is. Because I went into oh, yeah. front lines for the first time in years, I was just confused oh. and depressed. The thing you can do is, um, at least for now, it might change when they do this revamp. But at least for now, if you um, queue into the front lines roulette on a job you want XP for, if you swap into another job when you're in there, the original job gets the XP. Oh, so huh. like if you're leveling like monk, you can queue in as a monk, but then swap to say reaper and play it as reaper. Now that's then, gonna make astrology okay, get much XP. nicer to level. So um, that's a thing you can do. Um, that huh. I imagine for Frontline's roulette, at least that'll stay the same um, after the revamp because I don't think they're changing Frontline's roulette. They're just adding the new mode yeah. and changing PvP skills again. So, but yeah, just make sure you go to the go to the Wolves Den, take a look at your skills, set them up in a reasonable way, um, and then go in and hit buttons and die. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically. Anyway, they're doing some big changes for the Crystal Conflict. And the new, and they're revamping all of how all the jobs work. So, nothing to say here because it's going to change in a month and a half. Do we know what it's yeah. going to be like? What, like crystal and conflict. What does that refer to? Um, like? It's kind of it's a um, it's a two team map like the um, but it's kind of capture the flag ish. It's not quite capture the okay. flag, but it's closer to capture. Like you are actually trying to move something into the enemy base. You're not trying to get something out of the enemy base. You're trying to move something to it. Okay. But it's it's people have been begging for capture the flag. I don't know why they don't just put in capture the flag. This is a lot closer than anything we've had, so it'll probably go over decently well, assuming the PvP revamp, skill revamp is not horrible. Yeah. So whatever. Um, Arca Sodara tribe quests, not beast tribes. We're not calling them that anymore. Yeah, they were. Um, they, they they finally got around to to like actually, actually saying that, which is nice. And they've been they've been moving there in the story for a long time. Yeah. They're like, we got to do some UI cleanup, make this a little more coherent. Um, people on Reddit are mad they can't be fantasy racist anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that's got, it's gonna be fun. I, I, I wonder what the well, I, I do wonder what the mount is gonna be though. Um. Yeah, we already got an elephant. Um, yeah. The elephants in Thavnir are different from the elephant elephants in um um Girabania. Girabania. Urbania, though, so who knows? Yeah. Uh, they're a lot uglier in that there, I'll tell you that. Maybe it will be a... Can we... No, we can already get the, the bird. The little turkey birds. We can already get them out of that somewhere. Um, so it's not those. Um, maybe it is... Um, no idea. I think there Aren't there, like, lions or something in Thavner? Did I completely there are, there are some. Up? I feel like there's some things down in the jungle area that, we, that could be used. Uh, yeah. Maybe they'll give us, like, a, a snake or something. Oh, that would be that would be very there's a, interesting. There's a, there's a there's a new snake model in there that hasn't been seen very often. Hmm. Not like the old viper model that they use since ever since uh, that you can find like over in um, Dona. Yeah. Shoreline. Um, there's a different snake model in Thavnir, and then we got two more tri- beast tribes. Presumably, this one will be battle. You, they usually do the battle one first. Um, but maybe they're gonna swap. Well, yeah, things up. I wonder if we will get a gatherer one this time because the only time we got like an explicit gatherer one was in Shadowbringers. 
I think they will. I think they decided that um, Battle Gather and Crafter is a nice yeah. way nice of doing job. it. Um, my theory is um, Loperate Crafters and um, something just absolutely off the wall for Gatherers, like something in Ultima Thule. I was going to say Elpis Gatherers, but yeah. Ultima I mean, El- Thule Elpis works. is a little on the nose, but honestly, I think it's going to be Ult- an Ultima Thule. So in Ultima Thule, you, 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 after you do the dungeon, you get that little area that you do stuff in. It feels yeah, like they're going to cafe. Stuff. Yeah, they're gonna they're doing they set something up there. Tried, but it could be. Uh, I think cool. it is. I think that I think that's where they're going to I think that's where the trial, like the trial thing, will be this time if they're doing another trial I mean, run. You they're doing some sort of trial series, so yeah. we'll have to see. It could be like again, we have no idea. Like they could do, like they're probably not going to do Rogue Garlean, um uh, Machina, because they just they just did a Garlean theme trial series. Yeah. Um, and nothing else like strikes me as obviously like, loose ended, um, thematically appropriate that we know of. Like, Four Lords would like made sense because they were there on the map around Higashi to begin with. So yeah. it's like, and you know, you're over in not Japan and not China and not Korea, and they've all got that same myth about the four animals. So it's like obvious. You know, it could be anything. Who knows? I think it's probably. I think it's still a little off topic from the current thing, but I think that it's probably that the Ultimate Thule is probably one of the one of the tribes. But I do wonder, given how Ultimate Thule works, and that we have the uh, robots there, they have their little um, whole simulation and stuff. I wonder if they could use that. They, they could use that for the Criterion dungeons. We're like we're not actually going there. We're using the level simulator to, to adjust things. That, could for their whole, yeah, so it could definitely be it. I mean, they they've got a lot of possibilities. Um, yep. Who knows? Um, Ultima's Bane, Unreal. Um, did you ever do Ultima's Bane in AR, Zora? Uh, I did. It was the only like, yeah, that was the only um, EX I did file it. that I actually did in AR when it was like current. I did it um very shortly after I hit fifty. Um, I did it with a group from the C I was in at the time. Um, Bane that. One that's but jillion people on Lamia are in. They just recruit everybody. Um, we did it with a single tank because we couldn't find any other tanks. Because Party Finder was useless back then, right? Yeah. Um, with a single tank, which was like, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Like one of its big mechanics is there's a force tank swap. You have to tank swap if you're not, you know, like massively over leveled. Yeah. Um, but we did it anyway. Just we just had um, the healer like immediately res them. <laughs> and, and addiction them back to full health, and then they would provoke before anybody else got got smacked, and it worked. It's not a particularly complicated fight as these things go. Like I would say that it is less complicated than a lot of the twenty four mans we've gotten recently, even that not so recently. Probably even like as far back as um, Stormblood, twenty four mans are more complicated than a lot of this. I would say, um, um, Sid is way harder. Than this is ultimately. Yeah. Um, but it's a very fun fight. Um, it really takes like the Ultima weapon a like, concept and really does a lot of neat stuff with it. Um, I'm definitely going to do this one. I didn't do the others because I don't care about the old AR primals generally because they suck. Um, this one's a fun fight, and it yeah, it's like, not like the, super unfair. I, I, like the, like the, Leviathan the primals, sucks. Yeah, like Shiva's okay, she but I, she I still, she's okay. It's okay, but it's like still obnoxious. Um, no, Titan is just. <laughs> oh no! I am not doing a Titan on level. I will. I, I will honestly forever be sad that we well, we have they have still never shown us what the Titan fight looked like in one point oh. Yeah, that would be really neat because it was not on a platform. It's probably not. It was probably a lot less. Yeah, um, frantic. Because like it was finished. It was just you know uh, removed last minute. So, calling card um, style UI. So, this is the thing they mentioned back in the pre in Walker. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember them going, spending like 20 minutes on this. I still don't know what it's going to look I don't think they showed us any pictures of what it actually is going to look like. No. It's something you can make your character about your character. It will show up when you start the new PvP match. Oh, it's and okay. what I'm, yeah. What I think it's going to do. What I think their idea is is it's going to replace the um, you know, like when you're in a dungeon and you right click someone's the name in the party info. list, 
and you get the like the, what jobs they have. Yeah, I think you're going to get this instead. Yeah, so that's actually what the um, that, that that's what I like. Um, I think that's what it's going to be, well. which is cool. I mean, that's a neat that's a neat idea. Yeah, there will probably be, like maybe there'll be a button when you inspect someone to like pull up the picture of what gear they have. Maybe there'll be a button on there to be to pull up the calling card. Yeah, it would actually maybe be they'll nice be integrated together. They, they they could actually make like achievement to rewards that are interesting again, apart from just titles. Yeah, so. and like apparently you like you'll get customization options from achievements and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be anything super exciting, but it's it's it should be neat. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, what could be really cool actually is if they have if they have it so that it can also show up on the lodestone and you can like link it as like. I would imagine that that's got to be something they're gonna yeah. do. They've actually done pretty good at keeping the lodestone stuff up to date. Um, yeah. for the character stuff, so I imagine, and they might even get integrated into the app. For anybody who actually uses oh, yeah. the app, that one, yeah, I, 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 I have, have it. I have it registered. I have a sub for the app yeah. so I can get the extra, um, the Retainer extra and reduced and teleport saddlebag. and the um, extra saddlebag, but I don't actually use the app for it. Anymore. Same. Um, nobody's planning on getting a new Ishgard house, right? No, no, I was not planning on that. Yeah, we're gonna stay in the mist. I have no interest in. Living in Ishgard, Ishgard is gray and would, boring. Would and there, okay, like if they were to open up housing in another area, which we don't know what, what the next one will be, is there anyone you would want to move to though? Not really. I like the mist. Yeah, I like the aesthetics there. It's ple- the weather's pleasant. It's just it's a nice location. I guess it depends on what like the moon apartments would look like. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't I can't imagine. I would not want to move to Charlene. No, I don't know why anybody wants Charlene housing. Charlene would be the worst place to live. It's like the most obnoxious college town in the world. <laughs> well, I mean, I would, I would, I would take that over Garlem, Gar, Gar, Garlem all yeah. at least. Like, yeah. um, never gonna give us moon housing. Just don't even ask. Like, they're not gonna do that. <laughs> just get it. Like, just they're not gonna give us housing not attached to an actual city. They're just not ever gonna do it. Like, moon housing is literally a joke in the game. Yeah. Do a whole extended bit about it. I actually, I could almost there's a whole see part it in happening. the MSQ making a joke about it. Yeah, and then that's why I yeah. could almost see it happening if, in a future expansion pack, the moon as a spaceship becomes a hub. Yeah, I that's just don't. I can't way. imagine that happening. I can't imagine. Um, Hrothgar hairstyles. Who cares? Yeah, none of us play, play Hrothgar. I mean, I'm not good, play good, Hrothgar good for those who do. I'm... I mean, I mean, I mean, it's totally yeah. You know, apologies to anyone who plays them. None of us play them, so we don't. Care. I hope they figure out some way to have them change hair without having to use a a um, Fantasia. Uh, I hope they fix that up. Um, yeah. I hope they add some more. I hope they add some more Viera hair. And they added the that that really extremely like hair that every like every other Midlander here PC woman has, and I'm <laughs> using it because I like it. It's, I, <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that hair. Every other Midlander hero woman has that hair, but it's I like it. Um, most era hair is like extremely poofy. Yeah. Really, really poofy. Um, I just hope they bring back the um I had a short haircut I was using towards the end of being an Aura that I want them to bring back. It was like a Oh yeah, I remember I remember which one, yeah. I like that one. Um or the um let the um you know it's lots of clipping, let the um uh, he may cut one. Mm, a deep dungeon. Oh, we didn't mention it. It wasn't on here. But yeah, there's another deep dungeon coming. It will be somewhere. No, yeah, it's at the end of this. Very last. Yeah. Oh, okay, so the very. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, just so much stuff. Yeah, the um, Ishgard housing. We mentioned that already. Yeah. Uh, All right. Um, and Ameliance is going to be the new custom delivery woman. Um, oh my God! Yes. Pick that's out your your, your 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 nicest clothes for her. If they let you glamour the old dude in Ishgard, they're going to let you glamour Ameliants. There's going to be so many Ameliances in swimsuits. I mean, they knew what they were getting into. Yeah. They didn't have to make it her. They could have made it literally anyone. They chose her. Yeah. They got a little They could have done it with, with their dad instead. <laughs> like, like they could have chosen literally anyone in Charlene. Yeah, they could have chosen the whole um, dreamer set up, but like, yeah, they could, nope. what's it? Uh, what is even oh, his name? I can't remember his name. Cleaner guy, that would have been a good one too. Is his name? I can't believe I forgot his name. Um, 
You can tell that like we don't care a huge amount about male characters. <laughs> I, I like I like, yeah. I, I he, like the Gleamer boy. I he, just... He's perfectly nice, but yeah, I, I, mean, uh, I, I see so many thirst posts about him on Twitter. Yeah, it's also like, not he's, he's fine. He he's only fine. Few, yeah, he is, he also only appeared like significantly like two times, or, like once early Which on. Was honestly, more on. than I expected. He, yes, I yes, was not so expecting him to actually be that important. Um, yeah. Which is he, cool. might still yeah. get, he might still get a custom delivery later on. Yeah, because yeah, they, they, they do attempt to have two for expansion. Uh, there would probably at least no, there would be probably at least three. Um, glamour plates, yay! That's yeah, good. not until six, not, not until six point two, but okay. A minimum but. expectation is they're adding five to bring us to twenty. A maximum expectation is they're adding ten to bring us to twenty-five. The way I handle glamour is makes it not a big issue for me, but some people actually engage with the with the the actual appearances in the game, and I do not. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I kind of want to, but just I don't want to spend the effort. And with we have limited spaces, and you have to the way that you have to collect the gear, and it's like I whatever I'll, I have something that works, I'll stick with it for now. So throughout the entirety of the live letter stream, uh, I was also streaming, and I was the only thing I did on a loop was I ran Labyrinth of the Ancients because uh, I wanted the Onion boots because it's the only part of the Onion gear I don't have. And it didn't even drop a single time after, I think it was 12 runs total. Getting anything specific out of Labyrinth of the Ancients is yeah. horrible. Yeah. It's just the worst. Like, somehow it is worse than any of the other 24 mans. I don't know how, but it is. It just feels so much worse, like, looking for a specific thing there. And they even took the belts out. And yeah, and then Deep Dungeon number three, which... Any ideas? No idea, honestly. I mean... There's there's nothing the one, obvious I, this time because like when 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 the last time they did it, it was really obvious. Yeah, well, it was a, a it, it was the most obvious <laughs> this content will be here thing ever. I don't know what they would but, do there. I mean, I have no idea. I still um, feel like this. Go, like, I don't think this will be on the moon, but I still feel like they will they will do something about the big gaping bleeding hole of ether on the moon. I do feel that will come up. That yeah. might be a main scenario thing, though. That feels like Maybe. a main scenario thing. So that's what it feels like to me. It feels like something that will get if if it if it does come up again, it will be in the main scenario. Mm. It's going to be a side quest now, and it becomes main scenario relevant in several expansions. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the deep dungeon. They could they could honestly do anything. They could put it anywhere they want. They don't have to put it in current expansion stuff. Yeah. They they can just like honestly at this point, people I don't think would care that much. Like as long as it's interesting. Yeah, of all the content here that isn't completely new. This is the one we have the leads to, to possibly go on because we've had exactly two before and neither of them work the same and we haven't touched it in now uh, an expansion. Yeah. I mean, so, I wonder are they? I mean, I wonder are they gonna, are they going to keep the palm anders? Are they going to keep the 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 gear leveling? I mean, and yeah, and it could be attached to the west. Of, I mean, we know seven six point three. That doesn't mean it can't be part of the weapon enhancement stuff. Yeah, they could. Yeah. They could. They could make this part. They could make this the the relic thing. It could just be you're doing this to prove the weapon that is your that is the new thing. That could be something they do. I don't think that's hugely likely, but it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, we've done um, that. Concluded the first half of the stream. Yeah, this feels yeah that feels like going. Hey, that's hey that's still thirty minutes less than it took them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we gonna cover that the Q and A in this stream. Or are we gonna? Well, no, uh, I don't think there's too much. Anybody have anything they want to say? I don't really like most of the questions are like. Did you actually pay attention? I, just, I kind of stopped paying close attention after the first couple because it was like, well, it's you make your own decision, and it's kind of some of it's kind of like it. <laughs> oh man, I just want to know, but they don't really need to. So it's kind of like, well, we don't want to pin things down too much. Think for it for yourself. I kind of. I, mean, I do interest. think it's very funny that they confirmed that um, this universe runs on Lamarckian evolution. That's <laughs> extremely funny. <laughs> yeah. I, that one, I, I vaguely heard about it, but I didn't really realize what was going on until I saw it. Until I saw on Discord, it summed up yeah. that way. Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. It, it, um, it, it was. It, it's always funny when they have to come up with a lore explanation on the spot. I and honestly, that's fine. I'm fine with that. That's yeah. perfectly great for for a um fantasy setting. It's fantastic. Um, and it's also this is ex it's explicitly an intelligent design setting suit. To, yeah. So, you know, that's fine. I don't care. It's funny that they're like, yeah, yeah, Z we're not going to say it, but Xenos is gone. He's not coming back. I mean, See, that's really Xenos funny because half of the player base took the answer as, oh, Xenos is coming back. And the other half took it as, Xenos is absolutely gone. 
On the so other hand, they, course, they definitely said that that Heidelin and Zodiac are gone, gone, gone. Yeah. Definitely, absolutely gone. Oh, Zodiac's um, body parts are left, apparently. So the moon is apparently going to be important for the shards. Yeah. I don't know how, but apparently that's important. Well, you know, we have a we have a void we need to restore ether to, and what yeah. is trapped on the moon? Yeah, that's of ether. So that is probably I I can't imagine that showing up for multiple expansions from now. That just seems like a way future thing. I think we're gonna we're not gonna do any other shard stuff, or at least we're gonna stay on Etheris for on the source. Yeah, I, for the I would be first very, expansion for the yeah, next I, expansion. Absolutely. Yeah, way I, we're I, going I, I really I'd be very surprised if we went to a shard for the next expansion. I could see it maybe the one after that they might there might be enough time, but for the next one I'd be very surprised if we if we left. Uh, Emmett was all you should explore your shard. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, there's the, age, the question about the ages was kind of amusing. Oh yeah. I don't even so, I don't, I, yeah. I I'm at the point where I don't even want to talk about the ages of anybody. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Just whatever. Just whatever you want to think. Stop asking. I, I did think I, I did think it was interesting that like they said that when they designed the Warrior of Light in the trailers, they like are like, okay, how would he look two and a half years older? And then they were like, but yeah. that's not that like that's not canon. They're like extremely please understand trying to have this. their cake and eat it too. And yeah. then people just need to stop asking. And like time skip doesn't surprise me. It would be nice. I'm actually not entirely convinced we're not getting one. Logistically, uh, it's really hard, so I'm not. I'm not giving my See, up. I'm thinking because 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 he 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 was like he 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 he. Well, Josh Pisa was like he he's worried about aging up the characters in case people would want to go back, and then they can't do that. Uh, but it also sounded to me a bit like he was, you know, specifically putting that out there to gauge interest. Yeah. But that also means that if we're getting a time skip, probably not for seven point oh, but maybe at no. some point, or at least we will like. At some point, they their their redesign will come with a height increase, which is really all they need to do. So, and if they just they just bump them up, their height up a bit. It's it would be fine. Yeah. Um, oh. If, um. Like. Oh, sorry. Go like ahead. the adult characters are fine. Nobody like there, there's only three stages of characters in this of age in this game. There's you're a kid, or ambiguously twenties, or you're an old person. That's the thing too, because like. Or, they, or, 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 or you're Alpha now and LSA. And you're Alpha now and LSA. Yeah. Or like the only like the only other characters I know of who are in that weird in between are those two uh those two twins who are in the um anima weapon quest who hang out near the etherite in um uh um in um Idleshire. Oh, give yeah. you the quest to get the little crystals. Um and they are literally just like so obviously Midlander here women s- scaled down with a scaling <laughs> tool. It's so funny because they 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 they. they Alphono and LSA actually have bespoke models, like complete. They're they're completely bespoke character models. These I, two are literally just scaled down adult hero females with that particular hairstyle I talked about. Yeah, it's so funny. I think, and it, it's very obvious. I, I appreciate the way, like, I, I, I guess the thing is, like, a lot of the characters have like ages in the lore book and such, but that's generally the age that they start as, and not their yeah. current age. And it's probably better and easier to just have it be. Yes, time has passed. How long? Up to you. You're the one playing the game. Like personally, my my thought has always been one year per expansion. That yeah, that's the what I'm. Plenty of time for everything to happen. Not so much that like the only people who really would have noticeably changed, who we see a lot, who aren't like you know just there so you can do old content, are Alpha and LSA. Yeah, potentially Reen and 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 Gaia now as well. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we we also didn't even see Gaia. They can always just and they can always just go like you know. Time stuff on the shards. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, whatever. I I'm not gonna. I mean, the, the fact the, the fact that they have actually let go of time not passing at all, but still like, yeah. it's been gone fine anyway. Like that's like okay, okay, cool. So like, we know time does indeed pass. It's been years, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's I I think it's the best, and people just need to stop asking. Probably yeah. I think everybody would be much happier if you just use your own head cannon. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I think you got a head cannon. I think the only, I think the only reason, anyway. apart from the fact that they're noticeably like in between, is that is that if I think that what they should have done is probably they should probably shouldn't have had characters with set ages at the start. Like yeah. that's that's something Genshin does really well. Like that's something I don't say a lot, but like Genshin not having any established ages saves a lot. Yeah, of Genshin's that problem. like, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, you know, you know what else does this, and it's even funnier. 
especially because I don't play it. Which one? Your, but Pokemon. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. Pokemon's uh, like yeah. How old, how old are these characters? There's very few Pokemon characters. How old do you think they are? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Female Rothgar yeah. are still happening, but it's coming. Yeah, I'm, I someone said there's probably a huge fight in the art department about whether to make them cute or not. Probably, so, whatever. I, I'm not gonna play female Rothgar. I hope they look as awesome as everybody who wants to be big furry cat lady wants them to be. Female yeah. Rothgar really need to be just like the, the exact opposite of male Vier. Yeah, male Vier are the twinkiest thing to ever ever exist. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. ex- like extremely impressed that they just they they they, they, they actually were there and were like, nope, they're shorter than the women, yep. dainier than the women. Go with it. And if her, female Hearthgar should be like you know almost exactly as buff as the dudes. Yeah, yeah. My, my give, like just the... give them boobs, give them visible boobs, <laughs> make them less hunched over maybe, and you're happy. Yeah, my my feeling is that we already have this weird thing with our raw with this whole sexual dimorphism thing where we got yeah. the cute, the cute yeah. ladies, the big dudes. We've got several races that could potentially appeal to me, even though I'm going to be a Makote forever at this point. The people who want to play female Hoth Hrothgar want big B. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they want big B V cat. Uh, yes, cat yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So if that's they, what they want, and I'm pretty certain that's been made clear to them. There will be job balance adjustments. There is. Um, They're hiring. Job openings. They're hiring. <laughs> Can you speak Japanese and can you use Word and Excel? Then you can apply to be a game designer. It's got that says a lot about the game industry. Yeah, they're like, honestly, just if you think you can do it, you probably can at least try. <laughs> like the graphic one actually has real requirements. You actually oh, yeah. have to be able to do things for that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, but speaking Japanese, hard requirement. Um, yeah. As much as people sure. complain, that's ne- that's not ever going to change. Doesn't mean you can't work for Square Enix. We got Koji. We've got uh, Kate. I think her name was Kate. Yeah, Kate. Yeah, that was actually um, really cool. Like, uh, so. man, she was. She did really good. Um, I'm glad they pulled her in for the for the lore stuff because I have a feeling that would just like driven Imi insane. Well, they um, they they re- they revealed. Uh, so we didn't really mention, but yeah, they brought on Kate, um, and they revealed that she has actually like been one of like she she's been the Koji for Endwalker. And she's, the yeah, she's the she's the localization lead yeah. for Final Fantasy fourteen now. Um, Koji's uh, the localization lead for the Creative Business Unit three. Yeah, yeah. and he's been busy with Final Fantasy sixteen, and they they, yes. they didn't want to mention this until now because they were worried if they did so, people would be like, "Oh, so they're just wasting their talent on sixteen instead." Yeah. <laughs> Which you know, so, yeah, you know, it's cool for Koji. That feels like the kind of thing that Koji like has always wanted to do. Like he's like. Probably been there from top to bottom working on the localization for that game. It's also just nice because, like, uh, I, I the the reason I was really really impressed is to hear that about Kate though, because like, uh, whenever like, uh, I I I've, I've been making like threads uh on Twitter about uh Final Fantasy XIV's queer representation, like both the good and the bad about it, and whenever you do that about like mainstream like massively big things, people people like go with the assumption that there's like no queer people working on it. And I don't know. If yeah, you I, know I definitely this. say that we can. Def- we can pretty much say that that's definitely not true. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, here's the thing. Kate, Kate, Kate's ace. Like yeah. that's that that's that's, pub- that's before, publicly so, yeah. available information. <laughs> so we're not outing her or anything. But like, yeah. um, I remember she had a thread cool. about something sometime before in Walker, where she was talking about something in the game, and I forget what it was exactly. Yeah, she talked about the localization of something at, back in Shadowbringers. I forget what it was. Yeah, I don't remember, um, but but yeah, she's cool. But like seeing that stuff is just like really nice because she did we, she did a really we, good job translating. Yeah. I mean, she clearly already knew some of the stuff because she clearly worked on it. Yeah, so that's why they brought her in. Um, she could say the words, unlike um, like anybody else at that table. <laughs> like Yoshi would, Yoshi be did okay. Um, oh, I, I I am so I am I still feel so bad for I me having to say Castor Meridianum. On stream. She, she she never signed up for this. Just, yeah, and I mean, she applied. She applied to work at Square Enix, probably so, years and years ago, and had no <laughs> idea that she would end up becoming the English face. Of yeah, this game. yeah. It, I mean, it was a nice live letter. It was a bit of an. It was a bit of a different live letter from usual because, like, there there wasn't really never any... had one quite like this. Yeah, we've had some unusual live letters, um, but this was the first one that was this. 
overarching, probably. Maybe not since like the very old ones that I never saw from like back in the yeah the ones that were about the revamp. Times. Yeah, yeah. When I started watching the VOD, I, I was expecting this to be a six point one uh, uh, live letter, and I was like, <laughs> oh, this is very different. Oh wow, yeah. we're getting a bunch of info about the entire patch cycle, and like yeah. a lot more than, than what we would normally expect. So that was was very interesting. And it works too, because like it's yeah. just two weeks to the next one. So like we. <laughs> I mean, there's still going to so, be people complaining, but yeah. Uh, depending on how the timing works out, we'll have to see what we talk about for the next stream. Then, yeah, yeah I'm thinking it'll we will definitely be that one, and maybe even the next one, depending on when it when it falls. Yeah. So, uh, if nothing else, come. I mean, uh, we have the words of our some Twitter account to announce yeah. things if things go off schedule as it did this time. But if nothing else, next week, next next month, I don't know. I keep saying next week. Uh, next month will probably be um the six point one at least the first six point one um uh live letter and then we'll do something unique and different for whatever is between that and the actual patch. But yeah, we'll have to see when the patch falls. That so depends on when the patch depend. falls exactly. But um yeah, uh, is yeah. there anything? But we'll have some to... more things to say, but we'll probably say them in less time next week. Yeah, uh, is oh, there anything fine. either of you want to like plug or anything? Um. No, I'm good. You can find me on Twitter at Clearitellian. If you uh, want to follow me, send me a follow request and I'll check out your account. And if you're not like an obvious horrible person, I'll probably let you follow. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't have anything at this point in time. Um, my Twitter is at, is at Zarya Um I'm kind of intermittent in how active I am on Twitter. Some days I'll, I'll retweet a billion things. Other day, you know, or I'll watch a few episodes of things. Other times I might only do stuff like one or two days a week. So, uh, but uh, if you aren't uh, an obvious uh, person I don't want to be involved with, then you can just follow me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all there is. And you can follow me on Twitter at Feo Ultima. Uh, I don't think I have anything else that I can really plug at the moment either. I I did a stream about this live letter. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> If you want five more hours of that, but yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to Words of Awesome, and we will be back hopefully on the 14th next month. That's March 14th. Um, until then, take care, everyone, and yeah, our journey will never end. All right, see you then. All right, see you.